So, you're in one of those groups that didn't give up after four weeks. Give yourself a pat on the back, but then buckle up because today we are spending some time in what many people consider to be perhaps the most confusing book of the entire Bible, Revelation. Have you ever spent some time trying to read through that book and you find yourself turned so sideways that it's hard to make heads or tails of what on earth you're reading, if it even is something on earth anymore? Let me share with you another verse that has been a comfort to me as I've gone into a reading of, from the book of Revelation. This comes from an Old Testament book called Ecclesiastes. It's part of the wisdom literature section of scripture. Let's listen. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I hope that doesn't come across as rough or insulting to you, but mostly comforting to know that God doesn't expect us to understand everything of his will. And not only does he not expect that of us, he knows that we're not going to, and he's still gracious toward us, still good toward us. Now, the reason I share this passage with you from Ecclesiastes, as we're about to read the last book of the Bible, Revelation, is because it talks about eternity, that there is something about the foreverness of God that is built into our hearts, and yet we won't fully understand it. Something that God wants us to start getting our heads around is that he is not bound by time the way that you and I are. A big question we've asked this season is what is Jesus doing right now? <laughs> and part of the complexity of that answer is that Jesus isn't bound by right now the way that we are bound by always being in what we consider a present moment. Jesus rules and reigns over all things from the throne of heaven. He exists outside of time, and yet he intervenes in time to take care of us. So as we listen to some of these key verses from Revelation 21, listen to the verb tenses like we've done a bunch this season, but also know that there's something fluid about all of this, something that is both now and not yet, something that has already occurred, and yet we still await its fulfillment. We listen in to Revelation 21, 1 to 5. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. There is so much going on in that, and I pray that as you unpack that together with your group, that you are comforted by the sure and certain hope that Jesus gives to those who put their trust in him, that this life is not all there is, that we await eternal life in the new heavens, the new earth, where righteousness, where Christ himself dwells with us as his people. You see, there's something that Jesus is already setting into motion and already holding us together to receive. He is making all things new. And in that last day, when we also enter into eternity, heaven and earth will be made new for the body of Christ, for the church, for you and me, and for all who have trusted in Jesus for their salvation. Jesus is doing something right now. By his spirit, he is helping you to trust in him. And he's helping you get ready to enter eternity. When that last trumpet calls and our time comes, he makes us ready. He makes all things new. Thanks for studying God's word together with us in this season of small group ministry at Cross. I pray this last conversation for the season with you and your group is a blessing to each of you.